What's up guys, it's time to review an old 60s classic starring a very young Sid Haig. Let's review Spider Baby. Spider Baby stars Lon Chaney Jr., Quinn K. Redeker, Beverly Washburn, Jill Banner, Sid Haig, and is directed by Jack Hill. What is up, guys? It's patron request time. This is a review for Aaron. If you're of a certain tier, then you can request a review. Uh, Aaron can get a review every single month, if you want. And Aaron is one of those guys, kind of like Ted Harrington from the past, where Ted, he uh, recommended this movie called The Evil, which I'd never heard of. And I ended up enjoying the hell out of that movie. Aaron seems to be that type of person too because he, he recommended this movie called Spider Baby, which is an old 60s movie, uh, black and white, never heard of it. And immediately when I watched this movie, I was completely taken in by it. And I think I discovered something about myself. I think I'm a lover of 60s horror because the ones that I've seen, I've enjoyed immensely. Uh, of course, Psycho. Uh, Rosemary's Baby, Night of the Living Dead, and, and these are movies that just have a distinctive flavor to them uh, that sets them apart from other decades. And, and I really, I dig that about these movies. But first off, quick plot synopsis. Spider Baby is really about this like deranged family, the Marys. And I guess the backstory on this, their father died. Uh, the, the kids, there's rumors of like inbreeding and all this stuff and regression, like age regression. And they act like children, but they're grown-ups. They're in grown-up bodies. And so there's theories as to why uh, the Marys are like this. But I liked it in the movie. They never come right out and say exactly what it is. But you know, this is just a really messed up family. You know, you got Virginia and Elizabeth who, they just act like kids, like really demented kids. And we'll get into that. And then you got Ralph, played by the great Sid Haig, who uh, is a mute Pretty much, he he really acts like an animal. I mean, even like uh, walking on all fours. But there are these cousins of the family, Peter and Emily, and they uh, go to take over the estate. Uh, you know, of course, there's like money involved. It's real estate and all that. So once they get there, though, they have to deal with this very eccentric family. And let me just say, this movie is definitely rooted in like dark comedy. There's there's horror aspects to it through and through, especially in the final act. But they spend a good time, you know, letting you get to know this family and laughing at some of the craziness that goes along. The thing that really caught me was the opening scene when you got the mailman coming. And you don't want to leave Virginia alone because Virginia, she's got this game called Catch the Spider. And she, she you know, the, the mailman, he sticks his head in the window and then... Got a big fat bug right in my face. Spider gets to give the bug a big sting. She says she's gonna catch a bug in her spider web and she stabs him to death. And so that's at the beginning of this movie. So it, it tells you how deranged this family is. They literally kill people. And right after this, you know, they hint at you know some some killings that they've done in the past, and they don't care. They're completely insane. But director Jack Hill, he handles the story in a very playful way. And let me just let me just talk about the elephant in the room, or at least the elephant in my room when I was watching this, Rob Zombie. It's obvious that Rob Zombie got a lot of his influence for the Firefly family from Spider Baby. I mean, the guy even has a song called Spider Baby off of uh, the first White Zombie album. Uh, and I was doing, I was looking, I was researching on this, trying to find some direct quotes from Zombie. I didn't find anything. I'm sure there's stuff out there, but I mean, I came to my own conclusion. He definitely was influenced by this family, the Mary family, for the Firefly family. Firefly family is just a, a darker, uh, even more deranged version of this family. And Zombie's not Jack Hill. They're just two di very different types of directors. Nor does Zombie want to be Jack Hill, I'm sure. But this is just a bona fide classic of a film that chooses to go the direction of you know being playful about the family but through all that still being able to convey just how dangerous this family is 
Now the great Lon Chaney is in this. This is like in his twilight years. He's older in this movie. Well, no, it's it, it, it's more than a retardation. It's a, sort of a, a regression, a, a progressive deterioration of the mental faculties, a, a rotting of the brain, so to speak. It uh, begins in late childhood and progresses rapidly, uh, ultimately resulting in physical deformity. And it's funny, like behind the scenes, they filmed this in the summer and it was extremely hot and there was like no air conditioning. So they literally had to like wipe Lon Chaney down between takes because he just would sweat profusely, which is kind of funny. But that is one cool aspect too, to just have like an old veteran on set with this young cast. It kind of reminded me of like Halloween, how they had Donald Pleasance on there with, with the young cast. And so it's cool because the young cast can kind of learn a lot from uh, you know the the older veterans and Lon Chaney is definitely just that I mean the Wolfman people and there's even like some winks and nods to his previous uh, character the Wolfman when they're having like the dinner scene now Beverly Washburn and Jill Banner who played Elizabeth and Virginia were completely irresistible in this movie and I think they were the best part of the movie and you could tell that these actresses really dug into these roles and just had a blast with them and i'd say they're really just like iconic even uh and, and it's sad too behind the scenes because jill banner died uh in the early 80s from a tragic car accident uh somewhere on like laurel canyon too i was actually talking to leela about this uh you know because she lives in la and i was asking have you ever been to like laurel canyon and she said it's like beautiful up there but you know laurel canyon is famous because all these 60s and 70s musicians lived in that area uh, and they were getting together and just recording all this great music and I'm not gonna make this review about that but I've always been interested in like 60s musicians and how all these musicians would just you know get together and just make all this great music but unfortunately we lost Jill Banner she actually died she was like in her mid 30s when she actually died but she owned this role. I thought she was really great, and it's sad to see where her career could have went if she hadn't passed away. Now, there's a difference between Elizabeth and uh, Virginia, too, because Virginia is like the worst case scenario, whereas Elizabeth, I'd say a little bit more level-headed. She's the one that Bruno goes to, to to say, hey, what are you guys doing? You know, she's kind of like the leader between her and Virginia. Now, it was an absolute treat to see Sid Haig in such an early role. You know, he looks he looks like a baby in this movie. And it, it made me sad because I thought about, you know, he just passed uh, a few months ago. And it was just such a great loss. But the guy had such a, a long career, you know, and he was always able to just stay in the business. But what I loved about Sid Haig was he would take roles that he was passionate about. You know, he was really into uh, working for directors that he enjoyed working with. He wasn't one of those guys that would just take any role that came along. That's why you probably don't see as many Sid Haig movies as you might see other actors. He's just a very selective actor. But he was great in this role as Ralph, even though he didn't really have a line, he still was able to come off as kind of an animal in the movie, you know? Now, one thing I love about this movie, too, is the score. Like, it opens, you know, the opening titles have this just irresistible uh, score. It reminded me of, like, you know, the Munsters and the Addams Family and stuff like that. Gould having a ball. <laughs> Frankenstein, Dracula, and even the mummy are sure to end up in somebody's tummy. You don't hear scores like that these days at all. It's definitely a product of its time. And... I think this was a time in horror that you could have um, very playful and even comedic elements to every aspect of the movie, even the score. And, and, and the score, it only benefits the movie, it doesn't get in the way of the movie because it does have some playful elements to it. And I gotta say, the last act of this movie really drives it home and really just plants its foot pretty deep in the horror territory. There's that really iconic shot where you have uh, Virginia and Elizabeth coming down the stairs and you just have those the you know the shadows and everything that's one thing I love about black and white movies uh, Night of the Living Dead is a great example of this using shadows in black and white movies makes it even scarier because this scene right here it looks really really creepy 
And then there's this big chase scene with Emily when she's down to her skivvies and she's literally just running in this field and she's being chased. And it's just a great final act. I had so much fun with this movie. Thank you, Aaron, for recommending this one to me. It's so cool that movies like this, uh, they, they remain viable today because, you know, if you do a little bit of a backstory digging on this, uh, this movie was lost for quite a few years, even decades. And like the best version of it was like a, a really crummy like VHS version. And then Jack Hill literally found the negative, I think in the 90s or something like that. So then they were able to restore it, thankfully. So this movie was kind of rediscovered in the 90s and now there's like an arrow release of it. And it's definitely one that I want to add to my collection. I'm looking forward to buying it. Uh, but this is a movie that would be great to watch, especially in October. Because in October, we're, us horror fans, we like to pretty much watch just horror. So it's nice to have some different flavors throughout. And this one, you're checking that box of like that 60s horror category with also some comedy horror. There's just a lot of fun elements to play with with this movie. If you're looking for something a little lighter, but still creepy. So I'm giving this a high purchase worthy, for sure. Adding it to my collection, cannot wait. Uh, I'll put an Amazon affiliate link for the Arrow release below so you guys can pick it up too. But uh, let me know what you guys think of this movie if you've seen it. And if you have never even heard of Spider Baby, you're welcome. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do Free For All Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dum out.